Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you a way to organize your code in Swift UI. Let's jump right in. Whoop. All right, this is part one of this little mini series of how to organize your code better in Swift UI. Now, this is one way to do it, not the way to do it. And before we get started, one, don't mind my voice. I'm just sick right now, so, you know, sounding a little strange. And two, I'm going to be speeding up the video in some parts of this just so we can get through little parts that don't really have to do with organizing. Okay, so here we are. We have my content view here. I'm going to go ahead and quickly refactor and rename that because content view, I don't want it to be called that. So let's call this uh, people view like that. Cool. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a struct of a person and I'll speed up the video on this part so you don't have to watch it. All right, so there we have our person object, and it's identifiable, conforms to identifiable like this, having the var ID. Cool. Now, we're going to make a list down here of people. So the first thing we need to do is create an array of people. Now, we'll throw one person in there to begin with, and I'll just speed up this part too. Now, we have our person object, and we have an array of people. You know, it's at least got one person in there. And we're going to make a list down here to list out these people onto the screen. So here we go with that. Okay, now here we're at this part where we can make our row in the list look however we want. So I'll just start out by saying person.name in this text view, right? So let's quickly see what that looks like. I'll open up the side here, the preview thingy dingy, hit resume. All right, and there we go. We've got my name right there in this list. And let's add the uh, next thing we have in there, the Twitter handle. All right, there we go. We've got the name and the Twitter handle right there. And I'll quickly align these leading like this. There we go, to the left. All right, as you noticed, we've got everything in this one file. Now this is where we get to the organization part. Now, what I wanna do is get this struct out of this file and also this array of people. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that, first I'm going to close this preview pane. I'm going to create a brand new file. Let's do Command Shift J. It takes us right over here to the navigator where people view is. Now Command N, new file. And we'll choose Swift file and next. And I'm going to call this people view model. Now you might be thinking, is this MVVM? Yeah, sure, you can call it that if you want. I'm just going to put this in a new file. I'm going to call it a view model. You can call it what you want. All right, create. Now here we are in our people view model file. All right, let's close that. So now we're gonna create a final class. We don't want anybody subclassing this or anything. People view model. And we want this view model to be an observable object because we want any view that is referencing this view model to kind of watch in case anything changes in it so it can display it on the screen. In other words, observe it observe any changes. So I'm going to swipe back over to the view class in three, two, one. Whoosh, here we are. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this struct person. I'm going to command X and cut that out of there like that. Swipe back over three, two, one, bam. And I actually am not going to put it here. Rather, I like to do this. Nest it right in here because this person object is going to be specific to this view that I've got this uh, people view, right? And it reads better in your namespacing. You know, it says, this is the people view model person object. Now, if you had a different struct in here called like, you know, for example, people view model um, pets or pet object or something like that, right? This would be the people view model pet objects, people view model person object. Instead of saying something like people view model people view person. Does that make sense? So it's just a little uh, less wordy and it reads really clean. All right. So that's the first thing you do is we bring over that struct so we can use it here. Now I'm going to swipe back over to the view in three, two, one. Now you'll see since that person object is now nested in the view model, it's saying, you know, it can't find it. So let's go ahead and take this array and cut that out. Swipe back over in three, two, one. Uh, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Uh, that didn't work. Okay. 
people view model. Nice, here we go. Okay, and I'm gonna put that right here. Fix the indentation. And this array is now gonna be a published variable instead of a state variable. And it's because it's not within that same view. I'm gonna swipe back in three, two, one, bam. It's because the array is no longer in this same view struct, right? It's not within this scope. It's in a different one. And here we are. We've got this error here because now we need to make a reference to that view model. So like I told you before, that view model is an observable object. So it's able to be observed, right? We can observe it. And by that, I mean this view can watch that view model for any changes or listen for any changes or observe for any changes. So we'll say this observed object. See, you've got observed object and observable object. Okay, so we're going to do observed object in the var, and we'll just say view model, just like that. And let's just go ahead and instantiate it right now. So we'll say person or people, that's right. People view model. Open it up like that. And now we've got this nice instance there, and we'll say view model dot people, because that view model is holding the array of people. Now, perfect. That should work just fine. Let's go ahead and open up the preview so we can see what that's like. Hit resume. All right, there we go. Now you can see it's working just like it was before we separated out the data from the view. You'll often hear that called separating concerns, separating your data from your view and other things, but that's the gist of it. All right, that's it for part one of organizing your code a little bit better in Swift UI. We've separated the data from our view now, make sure to tune into part two, where we'll keep expanding on this, and you'll see a little bit more of how to organize your code and when to do functions versus computed properties versus whatever. So tune into that, and it'll be fun. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.